So we know a few things about a linear regression model with measurement errors. In particular, we know that if we have measurement errors in the explanatory variable, then the OLS estimator is no longer unbiased and consistent. So the purpose of this lecture is to dig a little bit deeper into this issue, trying to understand why the OLS estimator becomes biased and inconsistent. And we will do that with a very simple model of measurement errors that will help us understand the problem. So we use this same notation, yi is the dependent variable, xi is the measurement that's observed, and finally zi is the true value which is not observed. We do make the assumption that the conditional expectation of yi given both xi and zi, which we can of course formulate even though zi is unknown, that is a function of just the zi. So if we do as we always do, define the error term as the difference between yi and the conditional expectation, then we have yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 zi plus epsilon i. Let's just call this the true model because it does relate the correct explanatory variable to y, but unfortunately we cannot estimate this model as we don't have data on z. So to summarize this, we have a random sample on y and x we assume that the conditional expectation depends on only the z, the true variable. We uh, can then write the regression model like this, but unfortunately we can't estimate this. So let's now make uh, an assumption about the uh, measurement. So we'll simply assume that the measurement, the variable that we observe, is equal to the true value plus some measurement error. So I'm going to denote that by ui. So for example, if this is reported income, then reported income is equal to the true income plus some measurement errors. We'll assume that the expected value of the measurement error is zero. Some will over report their income and some will under report but on average the measurement error is zero so on average the x variable is equal to the z variable. Now from this relationship between x and z we see that zi is xi minus ui so I can now take this value for z here and plug that into my true model. If I do that, I will get yi is beta 1 plus beta 2 times, and the true value is xi minus the measurement error plus epsilon i. And if I expand this, it's beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus epsilon i minus beta 2 ui. So now I actually have, let's just write the yi here as well, now I actually have a model where yi is explained by xi, but the error term of this model is not epsilon i, it's actually this combination of the error term of the true model and the measurement error. So if, if we just call this nu i, that is epsilon i minus beta 2 ui, then this is the error term of our regression. The one that we run where x is explaining y. So we are actually now in a position to explain why the OLS estimator of a regression x on y will give you inconsistent and biased estimates. 
So if you remember, we have said before that if our explanatory variable is correlated with the error term of the regression, then the explanatory variable cannot be exogenous and the OLS estimator will be biased and inconsistent. But it's absolutely clear that x will be correlated with this new error term, nu i. That is going to be a fact. We can see that from this measurement relationship. If the error term is particularly high, sorry, the measurement error is particularly high, then x tends to be particularly high. And, for example, if beta 2 is positive, that implies that the new term will be typically low. So for a beta 2 that is positive, this correlation will be negative, and vice versa. So the OLS estimator will be biased simply because the x variable will be correlated with the error term of our regression. We can illustrate this whole setup in a simulation study. So here I have uh, selected some values for beta 1 and beta 2. I have started by simulating my z values. Those are the true values that we do not observe as econometrician. And I've simulated these from a normal distribution with standard deviation of 6. Then I have simulated error terms, the epsilon in our discussion, and those are also simulated from a normal with a standard deviation of 1. y is determined by the z variable, just like we have assumed. So if you look at the formula for, um, for the y variable, it is beta 1 plus beta 2 times the z variable plus the error term. If I run a regression explaining y with z, which again I can't do in an actual situation, but in a simulation study I can, then of course this will be fine. It's going to be uh, unbiased and consistent as we can see if we redo the simulation study. Here I have also created a scatter plot of, I have z on this axis, I have y on the y-axis, and the dots line up nicely along a straight line with a slope of 1. So, so far everything is fine. Now let's introduce the measurement errors and the x variable. So I have simulated the measurement errors here, u. Those are also drawn from a normal distribution and they are drawn with the standard deviation of 6. The x value, the measured value of z, is simply the z value plus the measurement error, right there. So the first observation had a negative z value, a positive measurement error, and ended up with an x value of minus 3.5. The x variable is the one that I observe, so we can now do a simulation study where I run a regression of x on y. And that's exactly what I have done here. Here I've done a linear regression explaining I, y with x. And if I F9 this one, you can clearly see that this estimator is biased you can also actually see that it is definitely attenuated towards zero. The estimator becomes closer to zero than the true value beta 2 of 1. If you look at the scatter plot of um, x on y, then it looks like this. So the y data is the same, but now I have x on the x-axis and the x variable has measurement errors. That's why the fit is much poorer, but much more importantly, the trend line will now be incorrect. The trend line will have a slope of about 0.5 when the true value is actually 1. 
So why does this happen? Well, the answer is I have calculated the, the new variable in this column. And the new variable is the error term of the uh, linear regression model. So it's simply equal to the y value minus beta 1 minus beta 2 times the x value. That's the error term of the regression model. So y can be described as either beta 1 plus beta 2 times z plus epsilon or equivalently give you exactly the same result beta 1 plus beta 2 times x but plus the new random variable instead. So either like this or like this where this is the new so just rewrite it as beta 1 plus beta 2 times the x i plus the new y. So the thing that will hurt the OLS estimator is the correlation between the error term and the explanatory variable. So what I have done is I made a scatter plot of the x variable and the error term of the regression with the x variable. That is down here. Here. And you can clearly see I have the x variable on the x-axis and the error term on the y-axis. You can clearly see that these are negatively correlated. And again, it's not surprising, right? Because if I have a particularly high x value, then that is typically an indication of having a very positive measurement error. Could also be an indication of a very large z value and a very positive measurement error will lead to a negative new i. That, and for that reason, the negative correlation between x and nu. That negative correlation will cause my OLS estimator to be biased and to be inconsistent. So to summarize this entire discussion, suppose that my measurement is equal to the true value plus measurement errors. Then if I substitute uh, zi into the linear regression model, I get a regression model expressed in terms of the observed xi instead of the zi. It's just going to have a different error term. But unfortunately, this new error term will contain the measurement error. And that's a problem since the x variable is correlated with the measurement error. And that is the reason for why the OLS estimator is uh, inconsistent and biased. The x variable is not exogenous in this regression model. So finally, a very interesting uh, concept related to measurement errors is something called the reliability ratio. So let's denote the variance of the observed x variable by sigma x squared. And let's denote the variance of the measurement error by sigma u squared. If the measurement error is independent of the true value z, then we can define something called the reliability ratio as the following. The reliability ratio is denoted by lambda, and it's 1 minus sigma u square over sigma x square. The reliability ratio will always be between 0 and 1. You can see that if there are no measurement errors, then sigma u square is 0 and the reliability ratio is 1. We say that we have 100% reliable data in that case. If sigma u square is very large, then this reliability ratio becomes much smaller, uh, having a lower limit of uh, zero. And we then say that we have very low reliability in our data. So I have calculated the reliability ratio here using the formula one minus B5 squared, that's the variance of the measurement errors, divided by B3 squared plus B5 squared. 
that's the variance of the z variable plus the variance of the measurement error that is then the variance of the x variable because x is z plus u so in my particular simulation the reliability ratio is 0.5 and it's actually not a coincidence that this b2 estimate is 0.5 or close to you can actually show in this simulation that we're not going to do that but b2 will become equal to lambda as the sample size increases for example if i take down the uh, standard deviation of the measurement errors a little bit to four now i have less measurement errors that's going to increase my reliability ratio to 0.69 and if you look at this one, if I F9 this a little bit, that's going to be on average also 0.69. That makes sense, right? Because the more reliable your data is, the better is the estimator using the X data. So you can actually go one step further here. Let's say that I actually know the reliability of my data. That is, I know the variance of the measurement error. Well, then I can actually adjust this estimator. If I take my estimator here and I just divide it by the reliability ratio, like this, then suddenly this estimator will turn out to be consistent. If I F9 this, this will be on average one. So one way of solving the measurement error problem is to know the reliability ratios and that entails knowing the size of the measurement errors unfortunately that's pretty hard to uh, to do there exists uh, a lot of strategies for trying to figure out uh, reliability of uh, various data sets and sometimes you can actually find estimates of the reliability of your data if you have such estimates then you can adjust for measurement errors one way for example to uh, figure out reliability ratio let's say for example we want to figure out how reliable reports of yearly income is then what we could do is we could ask let's say a hundred people and, uh, and ask them to report their yearly income then we could go back to them and say or offer them some compensation for spending uh, more time figuring out the actual the true income if we then compare what they first reported to the actual and true value then we get some idea